Are you by any means like a little bit nervous or anything, or are you or are you feeling fairly confident that you can get a result? Or um, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm overconfident we can get a result. I, th- I think like we should do. We should if we if we play as well as we can do, we should win the game. <laughs> going on guys this is the royal blue podcast this is episode 23 and joining me is joe from the blue monday ipswich town podcast how you doing joe yeah good yeah yeah looking forward sort of just about recovered from last night's game to sort of ready to go again for the weekend that's it mate that's it i well i was the same as i went to birmingham on saturday uh it was a full house against sunderland and i had a few i had a few drinks and stuff and uh a bit of a sore head the next day, like it's a rare odd drink, really. But um, it was a special occasion, so it was, it was well worth it, <laughs> and it was really good. Um, yeah. So the last time I had you guys on was when I was talking to uh, your co-host uh, Dave, and same again. He was a lovely fella as well to talk to. Um, I know that your channel's doing really well, isn't it? Uh, so what kind of like inspired you guys to? form like a kind of group and stuff too well it's it's sort of just grew organically really i think dave who was on last time with ben just started as a sort of two-man team and this was sort of pre sort of zoom days sort of pre-covid before we realized you could do all this sort of stuff from home so they used to get like a studio go to that and try and do it properly and then as it kicked off and we realized there's sort of the technology to do this sort of thing from home sort of a few more people came in and then we sort of got a nice i think there's seven of us now so sort of a decent coverage and sort of have three shows a week and we go from there and generally have sort of similar faces but a couple of these, like one guy lives in wales so he'll go to all the northwest games so you've always got someone there at the games another guy in surrey and sort of just just split around the country there and sort of rich who's sort of the main host now was warwick base as well so we were sort of nicely split around but i think the sort of football has pulled a couple of them back towards ipswich now over the sort of last couple of years with the success we're having at the moment. So it's gone from there. But yeah, no, it's just a good collective now. Oh, that's good, mate. That's good. And it's doing really well as well. I think it's well done, guys. It's, um, I mean, I always watch and tune in and stuff anyway. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's doing really well, mate. Uh, keep it up. No, um, yeah, well, like I say, we, we used to be, sort of, we used to get bigger numbers when things were going badly on the pitch and we had no success to talk of. because so I think it started... The, se- and the season started, we finished seventh in the championship and it was just a sort of slow decline from there onwards to the middle of League yeah. One. And when things were going badly and a manager looked like they needed a change, we used to get really good numbers. And it was always, oh, is it just misery that loves company? It's like, oh no, we've actually had some decent times on the pitch now as well. And that has actually helped with numbers as well. So yeah, it's always good to hear. I mean, so, um, I mean, obviously it's a big game, uh, obviously for you guys, because I mean, uh, to be honest, you know, I mean, like you say, using League One, wasn't you? Yeah, you've come into the championship, you're having quite a phenomenal season really considering um you know you're playing really good football i mean obviously the league table doesn't lie you know you do really well um uh, obviously it's a big game for blues as well because we've won the last two uh which were crucial wins really because it wasn't looking very good um not so much on tony marbury but obviously like obviously that's the squad that he's kind of inherited um from the likes of obviously john uses that we had at the start of the season and then we had uh wayne rooney and that was when we played you guys uh, at St Andrews at Knighthead Park. So it's a big game really for both of us because obviously it looks as if you guys are trying to push for promotion. I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Joe? Do you want to get promoted? What's the general vibe of the uh, Ipswich fan base on it? Yeah, well, we're all desperate to get promoted. I know I, I, it obviously wasn't the expectation coming into the season. I think I think there's, I thought we thought we'd do well, probably sort of sort of top 10 and maybe sort of push push towards the playoffs try and get sort of in that 70 point range and if it's enough it's enough if it's not it's not but now we're like I said we've got 69 points now which is what Sunderland finished sixth with last season so we're incredible and but for the three parachute teams the sort of relegated Premier League teams having such ph- phenomenal seasons as well we'd probably be yeah. top of the league in any normal year so it's frustrating in that regard but it feels like we've got something very special going on and if you don't go up, the vultures will circle. And ultimately, if they if a Premier League comes in f- for Kieran McKenna and we can't keep him, then there's going to be a real kick in the teeth and a real big blow and a 
backward step for the fan base. So yeah, ev- everyone is desperate to to go up, and like I say, we're almost well, effectively sort of guaranteed a top six space now. But it's just yeah pushing on. I think <coughs> excuse me, we had a we had a sort of I think it was billed as a poor run over Christmas where we only sort of won one to nine games. But when you look at the fixture list, there we played Leicester twice in that Leeds away. Um, I think sort of seven of the nine games were against top half teams and had a f- number of injuries and suspensions to, to get through that as well and we're now sort of back to games which appear more winnable on paper and we sort of beat Millwall Swansea away last week found a way to beat Rotherham last night which looked at a game on paper that we should win and then obviously you guys coming up I know it's you're sort of on the back of two wins but it's still probably one that's been penciled in our fixture list as a game we should be looking to go out and win or a game that we probably need yeah. to win if we want to keep up in that top two race but yeah I say there's no easy game at this level as we found out last night. We had a real, real difficult game against Rotherham. They, they, they played very similar to how when we played you at St Andrews earlier in the season with yeah. a real sort of high, high press. press, yeah, a real high press and really aggressive, and it almost looked suicidal at times in the first half because we were just getting in at will. But I don't know. We we just we struggled to cope with it in the same way we did at St Andrews. It's just you seem to run out of puff a bit there after about an hour. At St Andrews, yeah. and then we, we were able to come back and get the point there, which we probably didn't deserve for the first half performance. But yeah, it's I'd imagine that'll probably be another game along those lines <laughs> at the weekend. It's football, mate. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, it's like you're saying, up against Rotherham, it's just it's just it's just such a crazy league, and anything can happen. Like anybody can beat anybody. You got twenty. I mean, the way I see it, I'm a bit of a realist. You know, you got twenty four teams that realistically want to play uh, top flight football. So. They're looking to get wins, and it just it, it's just mad because like anything can happen, can't it? It's uh, such a crazy uh, tight league as well, isn't it? In terms of points and stuff, usually as well, isn't it? Yeah, p- people talk about, and, it, if, and Kieran McKenna sort of says that after the game that every win in this league is a good win. There's there's no easy wins in this league, and you look at, I say, you look at some teams, you think, oh, they're struggling they're down at the bottom of the league, but then when you look down the squad, you think, God, they've, they've still got some really good players. There's there's no or passages at this level is there now that there might yeah. be teams that bad run of form or a manager not doing well or things not going right for one reason or another because of off the pitch reasons but generally each, each team has got quality at this level and if the, yeah. and they're sort of well coached and, we'll, and if and if you're not on your game 100 percent, they'll, they'll come and beat you mm-hmm. it's crazy i mean uh, we're on our third third uh manager now obviously this uh season and it's just crazy because you know um a lot of the time you think it is down to the players, and it is because uh, obviously they're the ones that are on the pitch kicking the ball. Um, but you know, it's a big part of it is obviously the management as well, their setup, their tactics, their ideas, and it's just crazy because um, Blues have had like a lot of uh, issues in terms of the FFP situation, where we've been limited to uh, expand the squad and stuff. So we've only got like a couple of players that we've had in. Uh, we've had um, Pike, uh, Pritchard. Um, and um, uh, Dozel as well. Uh, sorry, uh, Dozel. I always get his name wrong. Um, from QPR, and they've been brilliant signings. You know, uh, really impressed. But um, you know, it's just crazy there that we've had Mowbray and like the style of football and how he wants to play. You now that we're looking, I think the best we've done all season. To be honest, I mean, we did play some good football with uh, Wayne Rooney, but it was just a uh, hit and miss. And it just wasn't consistent. I mean, you knew that yourself against when we played you at at our ground. We wasn't we burnt out at like seventy minutes, like you say. So it's just it's just crazy, isn't it? What can happen in that league and what um, changes? Yeah, and it was just, a big uh, difference. Yeah, it was just sort of with the Rooney, the whole Rooney appointment. It just seemed such a badly timed decision by the club that it it almost made his job impossible from the get-go because he was coming in when you were sort of riding the crest of a wave the previous manager was really popular yeah and he's it's almost like he'd been told he's got carte blanche to do what he wants but ultimately if you don't win games of football you you soon lose that carte blanche and then you're in a bit of trouble and I think we you, I think you lost four or five on the bounce when we came in and it was yeah sort of a, and then all of a sudden you turned up putting a really good performance and we're probably unlucky not to come out with three points that day so it's just it's just mad and it's just an incredible league really in in that regard because there is not there's obviously the disparity between the very top clubs that yeah it's left Southampton who are sort of Premier League teams and all but name really there but everything else is very compact in the middle 
What was you, um, uh, did you go to the game uh, when we played you? Did you go to the away game? No, no, I, I managed to watch it on, watch on it on town TV that we had. Yeah, and it was sort of similar to our game on Saturday against Swansea. Sort of stinking conditions, wasn't it? Really wet, really windy, and yeah, it just pressed the life out of us. And it was almost was playing like a two four four formation rather than a four four two. It was almost backwards on that, and it was a we just in some of those games we. We, we always try to play out from the back and we don't give up with that. I know some fans don't always like that, but we will do this and, and we will keep doing it until we get it to work. But it can be very, very difficult because once a couple of times it's it's not worked out, then obviously the head of the opposition gets, uh, the, the sort of tail gets up and it then becomes sort of a double-edged sword where it gets harder and harder while we're still trying to do it. But no, that was a... That was sort of a tough game when we were on a really good run at that point. And I, I think most people probably would have had that as an away banker. But the way the game worked out just wasn't like that at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, what's what the general vibe in terms of what the um, fans and supporters turning out for your home games as well? Because uh, when we played uh, Sunderland on uh, Saturday and beat them 2 1, which is a good, uh, really good result for us, uh, to be honest, it was the first. Game, it was a sellout in pretty much like four or five years. You know, it was like a massive day, and the atmosphere was superb. But many of you like kind of filling the stadium and stuff yourselves, or yeah, or it, every every yeah. game is a sellout at the moment. Every every away end, I think there's only one away end that hasn't sold out, and that was at Preston a few weeks back, and they because they gave us the whole five thousand end, and we still took like four thousand to Preston on on a Saturday. Really? Yeah, every every home game is sellout. out. Like last night, I th- I think last night was our third highest midweek attendance in like the last 10 years and Rotherham had bought less than 150 fans down there. So they squeezed those up and they released another 800 tickets on sale because Rotherham hadn't sold out on the Saturday before the game. And even those 800 tickets were snapped up before the game on Tuesday. It really is. That's I've got a season ticket, so it's not the issue, but my friends who don't have season tickets is like, you need to be on it to know when yeah. tickets are going to be released. Cause if you, there's no just, oh, I might go to the game at the weekend. It's like, no, it's sold out. And it's been like that since probably the middle of last season. It just sort of, it just turned and you just have not been able to get a ticket for love nor money now. Season tickets are sold out. They sold out on the early bird sort of price. It didn't even get to sort of the main sale. So the whole, the whole club is riding a sort of big crest of a wave at the moment. We had new owners come in, sort of put some investment into the club, not yeah. necessarily all on the pitch, but just around the town, around the stadium, just tidying things up because we'd had a we'd had an owner who sort of funded the playing side of it, but had sort of let everything else just rot effectively yeah. around the ground and it was just a depressing place. And it isn't sometimes until that changes and then you realise how yeah. bad things had got. Just even things like just putting like new sort of artwork up around the stadium and tidying things up and put new dugouts in and over the summer they spent like three million pound on a new pitch money at the training ground on things like that and it's sort of there's a real lot of infrastructure investment a real lot of community work going on with like i say we had a the ceo mark ashton was previously at bristol city the ceo there and he's come across to ipswich and we haven't had anyone in that role for the last sort of 10 years the owner was effectively the ceo but he was working yeah. two or three days a month and there's sort of stories where like people want a new ink cartridge for the printer and it's having to be signed off by the owner who's a billionaire who turns up sort of once like say a couple of times a month and you've got to wait for him so, so there was just a total inertia around the club and now sort of it's starting to fulfill its potential probably similar to how i know the a rooney appointment didn't go well but it's probably similar how your new owners have come in and sort of have yeah. released the shackles from the previous owners where it's been a real almost mm-hmm. like relegation felt like an inevitability yeah. for the last five or six years you were sort of circling the plug hole really weren't you and now there seems a new sort of wave of life there and this is what we've got at Ipswich now but obviously we've got the managerial appointment spot on first time and it's super and it's been yeah great since then it's great isn't it I mean we've got a lot in common I was talking about this today uh, last time um we have got a lot uh, in common because obviously we've had new owners uh, fairly recently between the two teams, uh, both American as well. Um, but I think what's crazy is, you know, I mean, some of these owners, you know, when they buy these clubs, it's just crazy. They just let them go to nothing. I mean, why buy a club if you're not going to try and make something off it uh, or try and make a business out of it or 
I mean, Knighthead, uh, Tom Wagner, he's been absolutely superb, mate. He's done so much stuff behind the scenes, you know, like the stadium, like you say, with Ipswich. Uh, he's done that for us as well. He's done a lot of uh, community like and charity work. Um, the guy that was a sellout for us against uh, Sunderland as well, he was inviting like um, people we like, uh, uh, children that couldn't like afford to go all up with disabilities, you know, he was like offering a lot of uh, stuff to the community, to the people in Birmingham, you know, he's done a lot of really, really nice caring stuff um, and his heart's definitely uh, in the right place and it's definitely like he's uh, got the club's best interest at heart as well, like even the catering side of things are brilliant as well, you know, um, you know, the beer, the food, it's gone really good. Like even like the fireworks at the start of the game. So, I mean, we've never had that before. You know, it's been really good. It's just, it's just nice to go. It's just, it's almost yeah, feels I like you're just something... like family, like, you know, like everybody's like family and stuff. It's just really nice. Nice yeah, atmosphere. It's similar to the, um, because like American owners, I'm sure like ours, they're private equity funds. They're doing this to make a profit, but they, they know the only way you make a profit is to turn you into yeah. a, or turn us into, or you into a, Premier League club, not Premier League team, not a team that's just been promoted there, but getting everything around it correct as well, so that when you go up there, you've got the infrastructure to be a Premier, League, a proper Premier League club, as opposed to just you flute to promotion. You've got up there and you don't know how to deal with it there. And like I said, they they buy the clubs for prices because they think they're going to be worth ten times that in five years' time, ten years' time. But mm-hmm. like I say previously, and like I say, it is business, and they're not going to want to lose money, but when you're sort of beholden to one guy as we were with sort of Marcus Evans, our previous owner, and you guys were with the Hong Kong, I can't, I can't remember his name. You probably don't want to say it out loud any, anymore. It's like Voldemort, isn't it? But um, we, we were there, but, and he sort of came in and it was like, he, we've got a 12 million pound budget to spend. And at that point in the championship, that was seen as a, a big amount of money. Like was, we were like the biggest spenders in the league when you had that sort of money to spend. Yeah. But within three or four years, Premier League teams were getting relegated and spending that that fee on one player, where that was a that was a big investment for fees and wages, and the game just got too rich for him, and he sort of clung on and clung on. And fortunately for us, obviously did his due diligence well on who we were selling it to. But it is just incredible how how things can change and how quickly they can change. And you Definitely. build a head of steam, and that momentum just carries you through with it. Like I say, we had a we had a false start because we had Paul Cook in charge who was appointed sort of at the very, very tail end of the previous owner's reign and he came in and just wasn't the right fit for the new thing and he got he got sacked and Kieran McKenna got appointed. You've had your false start with yeah. Wade Rooney there effectively and hopefully now sort of Tony Mowbray can help maybe not be the long, long term choice, but at least get you back on a straight and narrow, ensure you stay up this year and yeah. then maybe sort of be moved on at some point in the future and obviously Goes out saying all Lipswich fans sort of send their best to Tony Mowbray as well with regards to his health issues he's got at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, because yeah, we haven't got him there for a few weeks. But nobody knows what's up with him. You know, I just hope he's nothing serious and I just hope he's OK. Um, I mean, he looked OK at the game. But, I mean, obviously, you know, he might be a private person. He might not want to say what it is or what it might have just happened overnight. You just don't know, do you? It's, um, but yeah, I just hope he's OK. Um, but uh, Mark Venus has obviously uh, been been with him for a uh, good fair few years in his career like you know he's got a good idea of uh Tony Marby's ways of thinking and stuff you know so I mean I've got every faith in Mark Venus yeah, um, they, they were on two centre-backs when we got promoted to the Premier League the last time we played Tony Marby and Mark Venus has played as part of the back three and that's where they have been friends and colleagues ever since they've, they've gone everywhere together in that time haven't they and yeah I think Mark Venus's job title has changed sometimes he's been a director of football or this or technical director but he's, he's basically been Morgan's right hand man for well, it's got to be since they left us in what 2002, 2003, that sort of time, sort of 20 years they've been together. So, if anyone knows what Morgan's thinking, and I'm sure he'll be on the phone to him at every opportunity, but yeah, it's just a just a real shame that he doesn't get to come back to Portman Road as well because we'd have liked to have seen him giving him a good reception too. What's uh, what's really nice about it as well is like. You know, like yourselves, uh, Sunderland, I've got like uh, West Bromwich Albion fans, you know, so many like uh, opposition teams, I still think a lot of them, you know, it's really nice. It's just, yeah, I think it's just it's got it's a really good a, reputation, hasn't it? He's just a, a good man, isn't he? Whether he, he's the best manager yeah. or not. And I think I think there's probably few managers who have done a better job with him in the championship over the last 10, 15 years, because 
it's not just that he's been able to go into every club and probably overperform with them. He's managed. He, he's been a real chameleon with different styles, hasn't he? he sort of can, can play one way there. He'll go to Blackburn and play a different way. He'll probably play mm. slightly different where you are. But they're all all his sides always want to play the ball, play good football, but win games. And yeah, he's been a he's been a really good manager for a lot of teams. And probably maybe just not as fashionable as some new managers that come up as the next big thing. But and that's maybe part of the reason why Sunderland got rid of him. But as you can see, that's that's been a poor decision from Sunderland to make. And you guys are the yeah. benefactors of that as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy, isn't it? What to go through some of these uh, um, decision making. You know, changing on something that's working. You know, I mean, you can't win every game, you know, but making at these, at the time, there may be like good ideas, but you know, they don't always work out, do they? Sometimes the grass isn't always greener and. Sometimes it's best to just try and persevere and just see what uh, happens. But I mean, obviously, you know, with the likes of transfer windows, they can help. Um, what were your views on your uh, transfer uh, January? Were you happy with it or? Yeah, no, I was, I was really pleased with the January window. We we lost George Hurst on Boxing Day to injury, and that just left a gaping hole in our team up front. And we've managed to come out the window with Kiefer Moore, who's probably the pick of the signings of any striker into the championship in the second half of the season he's probably the sort of the best one that went down and he started well he's got four goals in sort of first well five games he's played now for us and then Ali Al Hamadi sort of backing him up he looks really exciting he's come on and scored, scored a penalty away at Millwall and just been a real nuisance to create and stuff stepped up two divisions and looks a really good signing so I think they're two brilliant signings for that for that window because it was a really tough January to do business when you look around especially in that striker position there was not a yeah. huge amount done so really pleased to come out with that because it, it felt like this is our chance and we're if we if we don't make the most of this opportunity we could really regret it in future years and I feel like McKenna's been given all the tools he needs for the rest of this season to keep us as competitive as we have been and ultimately yeah. it, might, it might not be enough because of what we're up against but if it, if it isn't, then like I say, it won't be for the want of trying from everyone behind the scenes giving him what he needs and for him with the squad. But yeah, another couple of additions we had in there: Lewis Travis and Jeremy Sarmiento, who have both come in and done well with their sort of more limited opportunities that they've had so far. But yeah, the squad's in a really good shape. Good. Well, I mean, I mean, going back to your point there, you know, like about saying, you know, there's a lot of the um, opposing teams as well. But I mean, uh, at one point, I actually thought that you'd pretty much be guaranteed like automatic promotion. I mean, you've stayed like second for pretty much more than half the season, haven't you? You've been up there um, literally like a shadow behind um, Leicester City, haven't you? So, I mean, what are your thoughts on dropping down a little bit? I mean, it's only like one place, but I mean, did you think you were going to yeah. get like automatic promotion or? Um, I, I guess it's just taken such incredible performances from other teams to reel us in in that like, we're still level on points of Leeds and Leeds have won, yeah. what, is it nine games on the bounce now? So they've, they've needed yeah. to, or eight, I think, they've, they've needed to bring out an incredible run of form just to be level with us now. So, yeah, we, we have dropped back, but we've dropped back because we had a really difficult run of fixtures and sort of issues with the squad over time. We, we had injuries, we had suspensions and sort of to too many key players at the right times. But when you, like I said, when you look back at the results, there was only really... I think we drew at home to QPR and lost away to Preston in that run. And they're probably the only two results that you say are like absolute stinkers of results. But really, is that a stinker dropping a couple of points at home in a game and losing away to the team in ninth place in the table? They're, they're not awful results. It's just the standard is mm -hmm. so high at the top. And Southampton, they were they went on a 22-23 game unbeaten run and reeled us in. But we're now back to being ahead of them in the table. So they've mm -hmm. had a they haven't had the sort of difficult run that we've had in times they've they played a lot of bottom half teams but it's going to take well it's going to be very very difficult to hold them off but this is what we did last year we were at this stage last year I don't think we had as many points as we've got at this stage this year and we finished on 98 points last season so we know how to time a run through to the end of the season but that was a run I think where we sort of won 14 and drew one out of 15 games so it was a uh, sort of probably the best run any of us found a seen in their lifetime and I, it probably looks like it's going to take something similar to do it again this season but I, I don't think you can worry too much when you, when you look at the say we've got 69 points from 33 games with more than two points a game well if teams have reeled us in from that I think it's more them being good than us than us dropping back 
Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the league table now. He's just, I mean, like the top four, you know, it's, he's quite tight. I mean, especially like a second place Leeds United down to like Southampton and yourselves, you know, it's just so tight. Like anything can happen. You've all played like the same amount of games as well. I mean, your uh, level points with the uh, Leeds, like you just said, and then you've got like Southampton, the two points behind. Um, but I mean, you know, is there a possibility that some of these teams could potentially catch up with Leicester? Is there enough time well, I in guess, the season? I guess we'll find out on Friday night, won't we? Because it's Leeds v Leicester on Friday night. And if and that's at Ellen Road, and if Leeds beat them, I think the gap is six points there. And we'd be, if we, um, we'd be nine points per game in hand. But I, I don't think anyone will catch Leicester this season because they're just too good against the teams in the lower half of the table. They just beat, yeah. I think their record against the sort of bottom half is like played 17, won 16, drawn one or something along those lines. And they, they'll have enough of those games left to accumulate enough points to hold anything off. But they're just, uh, they're just a team that's just too good for this level. But yeah. we'll see. But I guess sort of your issues are just keeping yourself away from the relegation zone, isn't it now? But a, a pair of back-to-back wins makes such a big difference to that end of the table. Oh, yeah. It really pulls you up there. We have to win back-to-back games just to stay in the same place where when you're mm. in that sort of bottom end of the table, when you win that, you can jump up five or six places, can't you? Yeah, that's it, mate. You know, I mean, we've jumped, like, you know, uh, a good five places, like you say. It's, uh, it's just crazy, isn't it? But, I mean, um, for our sake, I mean, I know we're doing this podcast, but, I mean, obviously... You're in a, um, a lot better position than we are, so I'm hoping that we can get the win. But obviously, like uh, on a friendship level as well, obviously um, you guys want the win as well, don't you? Could to obviously maintain your position, like you just said. You know, you want to try and you want to stay up there, don't you? So I mean, it, I think it's going to be like a very interesting game. Um, is there any players that have like actually stood out for you like this season as well that you're really impressed with? Because I mean, you've got some uh, good goal scorers as well, haven't you? I'm, I'm just looking at these now. You've got a uh, broadhead, he scored 11 goals. Um, and then uh, Chaplin as well. I mean, he scored 10 goals. You know, that's really good, really. Yeah. Are the, um, sort of the, like, our, our best player, our heartbeat of the team is sort of Sam Moores in central midfield. It, it's just the most sort of dominant mid, midfielder on the pitch in nearly every game we play, which considering he's sort of come up from League One and was seen as a bit yeah. of a sort of hard man rather than a ball player, I think would surprise people. But he's been exceptional for us for... Sort of two seasons now, but obviously you've got Leif Davis at left back who's got 12 assists from left back and he's a sort of left back when we're defending and left forward when we're attacking. He just gets up and down the pitch brilliantly. He's got great delivery, brilliant at picking people out, nice set piece on him. And yeah. then sort of around that, Kiefer Moore is, everyone knows all about him, but he's sort of been able to score goals. But the guy who's really impressing at the moment, he's he didn't start last night, but he scored the last minute winner and he started the two games before that is Amari Hutchinson who's on loan from Chelsea. And he's he's played in nearly every game this season, but he's probably only started eight or nine games and he's sort of been used as an impact sub later in games that he's really, really starting to come onto his own and really starting to look a special player. So I'm hoping he gets more starts, but it's difficult because that's at the expense of Wes Burns or Connor Chaplin who have both been fantastic, not just this season, but last season as well. So it's a it's a difficult one, but it's a nice problems for the manager to have at the moment. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, do you think it's going to be an entertaining game on Saturday? Well, Portman uh, Road is the place to be for entertainment this season. I think if you look yeah. at the sort of home table for goals scored, and uh, um, I think we've scored something like forty goals at home, forty-one. I think we've scored the most goals in the league at home, but we've conceded the fourth most as well. So it is. Yeah. There was a stage at the start of the season where I think the games were like 3-4, 4-3, 3-2, 3-2, 4-2. So there, and last last week was 2-2 against West Brom. This week, um, early, like yesterday was 4-3 against Rotherham. So it is goals, goals, goals at Portman Road this season. So hopefully we'll come out on the right side of it as we seem to have done most, most times. I think we've only lost once at home this season, which was in a 4-3, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Are you by any means like a little bit nervous or anything, or are you or are you feeling fairly confident that you can get a result? Or um, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm overconfident we can get a result. I, th- I think like we should do. We should if we if we play as well as we can do, we should win the game. But yes, yeah. it's it's easier said than done. And I think these the games when you go into it expecting to win bring a different pressure to you, don't they? And yeah. I think this will probably be one seen as one we'd, we'd be expected to win at home to, home to you guys. No, sort of no offence intended on that. It's just one that... <laughs> no, no. It's like the, the 
punters, the bookies will have us as heavy favourites for. So we've yeah. got, but we've got to go out and show why we're the why we're the favourites for it, and we've, we've got all the capabilities too. Is scheduling's yeah. difficult because we sort of played Wednesday night against Millwall and then had to be in Swansea away Saturday on a real heavy pitch, a real struggle, and then I think the players looked a bit fatigued from that last night. And now you've had obviously the midweek break, so we're sort of into the game on Saturday. But at least the two games this week are both at home. So the players have been in their own beds Tuesday night, sort of at the club Wednesday morning for recovery and then sort of Thursday, Friday training. So I think this was our last run of midweek games. I think we're now almost on the sort of Saturdays until the end of the season, bar the, bar the Easter weekend doubleheader. So, yeah, hopefully if we can get through this one with a, with a win, we're in a really, really good place going into the rest of the season. That's it, mate. Um, Roger, I'm going to ask you one more question, mate, and then I'll, I'll uh, let you uh, enjoy the rest of your night, mate. What do you uh, think the score is going to be? Come on, hit me with it. Um, I'll, I'll say 3 1 to Ipswich. Nice, Joe. Nice. Um, I'm going to go with. I've got to be positive. <laughs> There's no, there's no point being a football fan if you can't be positive, is there? Yeah, that's it, mate. I, I love the club. I'm going to go 2-1 Blues. I'm going to go for luck. a win. <laughs> good, luck, good luck for the rest of the season from, from Sunday onwards. <laughs> yeah, And you, Joe, as well. Um, thank you so much for doing this as well, Joe, honestly. Uh, really enjoyed talking to you as well, mate. I love watching you guys on YouTube as well. Um, keep up the fantastic work as well. I look forward to watching some of your other podcasts coming up. Brilliant. Thanks for that. And thanks for inviting me on. And, Hopefully people will enjoy the chat and we haven't just spoke a load of rubbish for half an hour. That's it, mate. That's <laughs> what it's all about, mate. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. Just a hobby. But yeah, all the best, Joe, and good luck for the rest of the season, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Hey,